and for all those participants, aspiring participants of the CPHQ exam, we are giving you a few tips from our successful uh, students who have cleared the CPHQ and have something to share with you, which will make your journey easier. Personally, I myself have been a student with Dr. Tenars, and he is wonderful in his teaching uh, style, and he takes a lot of time to make sure you understand the concepts. As for the exam, my best advice to all of you, as I've been seeing in so many batches, the best advice I can give you from my side is that be calm, read the question carefully, and answer to the best of your knowledge, and you're usually right. Don't go back and revise your answers. So before I can give you some more tips here and there, we have some amazing people here with us to talk to you. First, I would like to invite Dr. Ram Krishna to um, tell you how to reach the best cause, a few tips to reach the best cause. Over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Krishna. To just give you a brief introduction about myself, I'm a general surgeon working at American Mission Hospital in the Kingdom of Gaya Bahrain. I have been a head of the pharmacy committee and a chairperson for the infection control in my hospital for the last five years. And about two years back, I have become a member of the quality council and I'm in charge for the quality activities related to the surgical department. That's how as a surgeon, I've been, uh, what I say, I cannot say I've been pushed, but I have voluntarily taken up this to come into healthcare quality. Uh, it has been in need a very, very uh, educational journey by being a part of this uh, CPQHQ exam and being a part of Dr. Tenna Sir's group. Uh, if I can have permission, can I share one slide with the group? I was introduced to this uh, educational group by two of my previous batchmates. We are the third group from our hospital wherein we have taken uh, training and education under Dr. Tenna Sir. To be, uh, what I'm speaking is a lot of retrospection, but this is how it helped me to really increase my scoring in the exam. First and foremost, what I would advise the group is, uh, please listen very intently to what Sir says. He speaks very softly, slowly, and he will repeat everything. But the most important part is almost to every single answer, to every single problem, during the lecture itself, he will tell you, he will give you tips. So it's very important that as, as a trainer or as a trainee that we are undergoing this course, that we listen to what he tells. Each point he makes, subtly he will tell, but that made a lot of difference to how I scored it. Now, if you look at how the exam is there, the two major areas where there is a high possibility that you can score 100% is health data analytics and perform and process improvement. These are two areas where uh, Sir takes a lot of pain to tell us there is a high possibility of getting 30 out of 30 in data health analytics. And this is not even from an exam perspective, but personally for me, after I finished the exam, now when I'm doing data analysis, I've understood so many things new, which I thought, hey, if I had known this earlier, probably I would have done better in life. And that's my perception. And another area where there's a high chance that I could perform well based upon what he gave me and what questions he told me and based on what notes I had taken down during his classes, that is performance and process improvement. And if you see these two groups are wherein you can, there is a high possibility that you can score 100% and that will make a phenomenal difference to the entire exam. Read the exam questions very carefully. Almost every single answer is you will know the answer from Sir's mouth itself. And to just give a retrospection of what I have taken down is be very organized in your schedules. Do not miss your classes. Not in a negative way. Many people had missed the classes. And in the next half, when they were coming for the classes, they couldn't answer, they couldn't understand the concepts. For me, that was very valuable. What I reiterate again is listen very carefully. And sorry, that is a wrong word I've written classes. Take your notes very carefully. Sir's notes made a lot of difference to me. And in the training program, in the education program, 
be very intent in the last month that is very important listen very carefully do the questions very well and don't keep any other activity for yourself in the last month for the exam that will make you score a better score than what other can be. this is my take and this is my tips for increasing the score rate thank you thank you so much sir that was very short and crisp but i think it was very effective i'm sure everyone over here will agree um to all the participants here who are planning to take up the cphq exam in march or are planning to take it up in future also please do listen to these tips very carefully because they will help you and help you also to alleviate your stress while you're preparing it's not an herculean task it's quite simple if you just know the tricks of the trade so thank you once again dr krishna thank, thank you ma'am advise the group and gathering here our next speaker of the day we have another uh, student who has recently cleared her cphq we have with us Ms. Frida Sequeira, who is going to tell you all the important tips and challenges that you will face while you're planning to attempt the CPHQ exam. Over to you, Frida, ma'am. Good afternoon to all. First of all, thank you, Dr. Rohita, ma'am, and Dr. Tender Rasu, sir, for giving us a wonderful opportunity. Yes, I have passed under the patronage of my most dedicated. and my best sir that is dr tenarasu sir all credits to my success goes to dr tenarasu sir to start off with hard work dedication commitment determination and perseverance is the key to success the certified professional in healthcare quality cphq credential is widely regarded as the paragon for healthcare management to start off with my name is frida sequera i am a registered bsc nurse i am also a bls and acls instructor I have done my mba in hospital management and yes today i am a proud cphq past certified student so some important tips as dr rohit mam has already been said to climb the ladder in cphq to start off with i would say there is nothing impossible my dear friends if you believe in yourself you will get through it very easily where there is a way there is a will yes we just need to believe in ourselves henry ford has once said whether you believe you can or you can't you are just right so the first step to all of you all is believe in yourself have that self confidence that yes you can do it and you will do it second make a time table usually it takes about 3 to 4 months if you are really dedicated and committed and focused to study then that would be more than enough for you to give the exam prepare yourself well i repeat prepare yourself well read the resources be it book be it a powerpoint lecture if you are a student of raghav institute then you read through the topics again and again at least minimum twice keep practicing the question papers again and again have a practice plan just don't go ahead and memorize things because cphq is different to what we were doing till now you just can't by heart and get through the exams you have to use your logical and practical thinking understanding the concepts to your friends is very very important as this is the only key to success and moreover 
This was my only key to success. I again say, keep practicing the question papers. Why we have to practice the question papers? Because that will help you to manage your time, which is very important. Managing your time is the most important to pass your CPH. And also, it will help you to identify in which areas you are weak at. Once you identify your areas which you are weak at, you can then put an extra effort and time for that particular topic so that it will help you to improve your performance. Time management is very important. At least keep at least one to two hours dedicated time per day and study, be it evening, be it early morning, but dedicate your time because only hard work and dedication can get you there. Next, I would also like to share few of the challenges which I had come across. So I have just included that. We are all professionals. And moreover, we are all working maybe an eight hour shift, be it a 12 hour shift, but we are all juggling a full-time job and moreover, family commitments. Sometimes we may not get time to study, but don't panic, don't be stressed, focus and you will get through it. Keep a timetable, as I said, and make it a point that every day you spend one to two hours going through the book, the resource materials, and the PowerPoint lectures that has been provided to you. Work pressures, maybe we have an assignment to complete, maybe we have to go through some accreditation cycles, Maybe sometimes we have to attend some very important meetings. We understand all that. Even I have gone through all of this. But focus. Never say you cannot. It, there is nothing impossible in this world. Everything can be done. But you need to have a will. If you have a will, you will have a way. And that's what we had. And that's what Dr. Tenar also said always tells us that study, be focused, be determined and hard work, and that will get you through. All my credit, I once again says, goes to Dr. Tenar Asusa. For all of those who are writing your exams, I would say just one thing, do not worry. Yes, there will be a fear down our mind, in our hearts, but don't give up. Schedule your exams. Don't worry whatever it is. You will get through. Focus. And once you prepare a deadline that this is it, this is all I'm going to do. Because if you give a longer deadline, there is a high chance that you will forget what you study. When things are fresh in your mind, it will get easier for you to get through it. Develop a plan and execute it methodologically and as they say rest will be history always remember my parents and dr tenderasu sir both says it do your best and leave the rest to god pray well and you will see miracles in your life believe and and only believe and that's the key to success Thank you so much, Rohita ma'am and Dr. Tenarasu, sir. Thank you so much, Prira ma'am. That was such a lovely uh, talk. That was such a, so inspiring and so much life in what you're saying. You're so right. At the outset, we need to have prayer in our hearts. How much ever we have luck, how much ever we have our hard work, a prayer is what takes us the end of the way. So... With that in mind, and as Sridhar Ma'am said, time management. Next, we have 
uh, Ms. Deepti Dinesh from UAE to talk to us about time management and tips to choose the best option. You know that one option which really irritates you because you're not sure whether it's A or B, but you think both are right. Which do you choose? We have Deepti Ma'am with us to tell us that. Over to you, Ma'am. Um, hi, good evening, everyone. Am I audible to you? Because no, I'm here in Expo in a corner, so I'm I'm doubting that uh, this. It's all okay. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Tenere Susar and uh, Dr. Rohita for this opportunity, and um, um, and I just want to make a small mis I mean correction in the flyer. You know, the, you all put like a doctor Deepti, which I overlooked it. Actually, I'm a nurse. Uh, I'm a lactation consultant, and uh, now. Um, I'm a CPHQ holder. So um, here I'm here uh, to discuss with you um, some tips for choosing the correct option and the time management during the examination. So let me start with the time management. We all know we have 140 questions to answer and uh, our time is for three hours. So like uh, if you look into the details, like we have one uh, minute plus, plus some extra seconds for one hour. Uh, question to answer so always i used to think like oh i have only one minute for one question like that okay i kept uh, kept a deadline like that for each question so uh, i didn't take much time spending for each and every question so, you know some questions are very direct uh, to the point you know, that sir has taught us in the class exactly as such so um i didn't spend time looking at that question lots i can select the answer easily but some questions of course it is tricky and uh, if I spend lots of time uh, reading that question alone, I'm sure that I'll be ending up, uh, you know, ans not answering many questions. So what I have done is uh, there is something called bookmark. Um, if you are uh, in doubt, you can bookmark a question and you can go ahead. So for those questions which I had doubt, I bookmarked it and I went ahead and I, um, I clicked all those questions which I'm sure about the answers. And then... At the end, before you submit the question answers, what you can do is just to click on the bookmark button, then it will take you to directly to those questions which you had doubts. Then I read it carefully, I read it over and over again, and I selected the answers. This is what actually I have done uh, for uh, time management, and I'm sure this is a useful tip for you that you can also do the same. Um, you know, before we go to the actual examination, they'll give us a practical one to experiment. So I I took it seriously and I was just experimenting it nicely so that um, I got familiar with the keys, the navigation keys, forward key, backward key, bookmark key, all those things. So it was really useful for me during the exam for my time management. So this is the same thing which I also tell you, like if you are sure about the answer, go ahead and click and go forward. But if you're not so sure, you can do bookmark and come back to it and correct it later on. Um, then um, to choose the best option, um, uh, what I was doing basically, you know, if, uh, if you must have listened, I'm sure you all must have prepared very well by now. And uh, Dr. Tenel Shishar usually do the same thing in his preparation classes. You know, uh, when we read a question and the options, um, he repeats reading the options and um, you can eliminate those who, um, those options which you think it's not correct. Okay, as I told you, some questions are direct, so you can opt the correct option. But if you are in doubt to choose the best option, what you can do, or usually we have four options for each question. So read the question and read the options again and again and eliminate the wrong ones. This is what I basically I did. And uh, this, I totally learned it from Dr. Teneresu's uh, practical sessions. When we attend the practical um, question and answer sessions towards the end, um, Dr. Uh, sir, uh, he usually do this one that uh, he teaches us like how to eliminate the wrong answers to and select the best option. I think this helped me a lot in the exam uh, to eliminate the wrong ones and go for the best option. Even when I selected the best option, I was in doubt, oh, is it right or wrong? But I'm sure like maybe two I can eliminate. Uh, I'm sure that this is not the answers, but then two I got confused, eh? either A or B, like that. So then go for it, you know, um, 
if we listen to the doctor's classes then definitely if it is a new question also we can um, apply those concept this will help us to uh, select the best option so these are the things basically i was doing and um, um, uh, for cphq as i told you i am from a um, nursing background i don't have much experience in quality um, then i was thinking it was a very difficult tough exam it is going to be like that even i told dr tenaris sir sir uh, i'm i'm not so confident i'll not take exam this time i'm sure i'll not pass like that then sir was telling no you go ahead you are prepared well like that but then uh, yes i also thought let me go ahead and same like you all i have listened to the success stories uh, 3 months back and they were totally telling all those tips uh, tips for success right um then um towards the end of the examination towards uh, the examination time i took leave like 10 12 days i took leave and i dedicated my time um um you know uh, for data analytics it's very uh, it's okay because how much of a sir is telling you you just listen to him and do that questions definitely you are going to score 100 out of 100 for that for sure uh, statistics data analytics part is very easy actually only listen to sir's questions and mostly it will come with some change in the numbers that's it and uh, for me the difficult portion was a bit about the leadership things leadership things and quality improvement so when i took leave towards the examination day then i dedicated my time for this quality improvement and leadership so you try to find out which is your weaker side and work hard on that part this is what i uh, i said to you from my experience okay uh, then definitely success will be yours for sure okay and um, i wholeheartedly want to thank dr tenaris sir because um, i'm sure that i got this uh, cphq because of his um, teaching and sir's de dedication towards teaching and i still remember sir used to scold me even when uh, my scores when it went down and if i'm not attending the classes uh, even sir used to scold me like a child um, but um, i can say 100% that with if i didn't join rishi i if i if i, um, if I were not the student of dr tenaris sir definitely i may not be able to pass this examination so believe in sir and believe in yourself and go ahead definitely you all will pass this is what i want to say thank you so much everyone thank you sir once again thank you so much deepthi ma'am it is so true dr tenar sir is a miracle worker he takes so much time and patience to actually read out and pull out the concepts out of your head and drill it in such that you don't forget so thank you ma'am thank you for sharing your experience and your you know the way of managing the time it it all comes down to individual talent as you all could see from um what they have said the talent of recognizing where you need to work on yourself it's not your aptitude it's not your work hard work or anything like that it's just about recognizing where you need to give time where you need to go faster and where you need to work on yourself so if you can recognize an area which you know you're not feeling very strong about please do contact us and we will help you out with those questions also we will talk to you about how you can approach those questions also you can approach dr tenar so any time when you have a doubt regarding or you can approach me if you have a doubt regarding any of the questions or subjects we will definitely be there to push you on your journey through with cphq so for a few more tips especially regarding the importance of understanding the scenarios like i said you need to have an idea of what exactly is happening in the person who's creating the question so to understand their minds you need to understand the scenarios so for that the application and the learning style on that we have with us mr parvati chandra babu from qatar who's also recently cleared her cphq welcome ma'am and over to you uh, thank you rohita ma'am good evening good evening everyone thank you for joining us today and uh, thank you raisi team rohita ma'am and thana sir for giving me this great opportunity uh, i'm so proud to uh, see my colleagues uh, giving talks as the quality experts 
And um, to me, uh, my role here is to, um, as Rohita ma'am said, is to mention about the, uh, the application. Uh, ma'am, is it okay to share the screen? Rohita ma'am? Yes, sorry. May, may I share one presentation, yeah. please? Yes, yes. Sir is given you permission. Please go ahead, ma'am. So uh, my role here is to mention the importance of understanding scenarios, uh, application and learning style. So me also starting with uh, CPHQ and its domains. So as uh, Krishna sir said, uh, the CPHQ clearly outlines the four domains that is organization leadership with 35 questions that includes the structure, integration, regulatory accreditation, external recognition, training and communication performance and process improvement with 40 questions that includes identification of improvement opportunities, implementation and evaluation, and statistical part with 30 questions under healthcare data analytics and 20 questions for patient safety that includes assessment and planning. Since all these four domains are clearly defined, our role here is to identify, to familiarize the domain and its content, because that will provide you an in-depth information on specific exam topics and help you to identify the areas to study. Uh, if I'm rightly pointing it out, it's a need assessment which we are doing for ourselves. Because if uh, we are, if I'm a biostatistician, if I'm going through the domains, I can clearly understand. Uh, I have to give less weightage to the statistics at the same time, focus more on either leadership or patient safety. On other hand, if I'm a nurse, I can uh, I, I can give more weightage to healthcare data analytics, analytics than patient safety. So once you did the need assessment by yourself, the next important task for us is to streamline our thoughts accordingly. Because why I am mentioning here this one is, I'm a person who spent around six months simply browsing uh, Google and all those resources. I had no, I had strong desire to get CPHQ, but I had no idea where to start with. So avoid unnecessary browsing and what you uh, need is a right guide, a right, uh, at the right time and at the right place. So you have to get feedback from the CPHQ professionals or other subject matter experts. And that's how I joined the RIC team. So moving on with the applications. So uh, in the questions, we can see there is 23 percentage of recall, 57 percentage of application and 20 percentage of analysis. So why these application questions are? These questions are designed to test if the candidates possess enough knowledge uh, to perform the task in healthcare, ensuring those quality elements. And also that helps, to, helps them to analyze whether we are capable of uh, using our logical and critical thinking and situational management. Also practical knowledge over theoretical knowledge are assessed here. But I can make sure it's this practical knowledge is not in terms of experience, what experience you have. It is simply on how you own the quality things, how you own the quality domains in your practice. So uh, my advice here is how to approach, approach the application questions. So if you are uh, facing an application question, you can simply split it into two steps. First is identifying which topic it is linked to. That topic, which it is linked to, we have to go back to the initial step, our understanding about the domains. And under each domain, we know these topics are there and we have to understand, we have to get through the knowledge of concepts and principles in detail. And you have to practice the mock test repeatedly. So whenever you are doing the mock test, you will, you, you will be, getting more proficient to identify which topic this question is linked to. And at the same time, when you're taking the practice, note down the key phrases and words, as uh, Ms. Frida and Deepthi Mam rightly pointed out, uh, Tana sir was giving us every, every key points and we have to note it down, which later help us to have a uh, revision prior to our exam. So next step, when we face the uh, application question is, once you have identified the topic, you have to really focus on the key phrase which, we, which you pointed out. So the key phrase, you have to see how it fits to the given question. 
for example i got a question uh, that the, uh, that may, uh, where the key phrase is accreditation don't go and right away choose the answer that comes with the accreditation you have to see how that term fits to the question either that is an initial accreditation or about a reaccreditation so if it is a re, if it is an accreditation uh, it it is coming under the organization leadership and the leader has to go about the system readiness assessment the leader has to give priority to see whether the system is ready to uh, go ahead with the accreditation but if Sorry, it is a re excuse me so if it is a reaccreditation you have to see uh, Uh, not about the readiness assessment, but about the exit survey report status. So don't get, uh, don't be in a hurry to choose answers based on the keywords. You have to really confirm how these keywords fits into the application question. So moving on to the next part, develop on philosophy. Uh, what to follow? What to follow? How I did it? It's a self reflection. what i mentioned here is develop on philosophy i meant is to polish your thoughts and experience you know the first thing i may say is to follow your intuition i followed mine and i joined rice and uh, that was the that was the right choice i made i followed my heart there the next thing is develop on trust so the trust is something that builds your confidence Uh, my trust was totally embedded in Raisi and with the Nasser, and time proved that uh, it was right. And my confidence is something I am still sustaining in my period in my workplace. Next is switching your primary focus. I I I just want to uh, share the time when the Nasser asked me in our first class why you joined Raisi. I wondered what a question. It's only for a certification, but later on. the time the in course of time i realized i was uh, you know i have to really approach this not to pass the exam but to own the essence of healthcare quality and uh, tenasal made it happen and he made me a real quality professional uh, to focus uh, on ensuring safety and quality in my field rather than getting some certifications next is be consistent in preparation Uh, we are lucky to have rice's educational material and classes but make sure you are really going to those uh, educational materials repeatedly and you are uh, every time if you go through it you will get uh, new ideas next is speak up don't wait to share your thoughts and ideas among your colleagues this rice is giving us an is uh, giving us an incredible platform to speak initially i was uh, sh uh, so shy to speak up later then sir and my colleagues supported us and every discussion ended up with some new ideas which which molded us to face is the cphq exam next is discuss and debate learning from mistakes so uh, then sir is always uh, inspiring us to to discuss even he is saying I i'm not complete i'm learning from you you have to learn from us this was really motivating you know every time at the end of every discussion we have some takeaway messages and uh, finally in your exam hall you will think of all these things because these discussions really will help you to choose the right answer at the right time and next is no excuse and this so there is no excuse uh, especially with tanna sir you know you have no right to give any excuses he will catch you then and there so uh, follow him and give no excuses give your 100 percentage and more practice uh, face each mock exams as real exams don't try to uh, you know get high scores in tanasa's list just try to face e each exam as you are giving the the real one and in the final exam you will feel like you are just doing a mock as you did yesterday you don't find anything new there everything we are already aware of and that's it we are here to make a difference not just a living thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much ma'am i think by now all of you will have a good idea on how to get yourself through the cphq exam without much ado so just to sum it all up we had 
Dr. Krishna telling us just to reach the best cause and most of the things that he was talking about were again in part pay attention to your uh you know the classes when you attend all your classes as Peter Mam said time management is very important as uh, Dr. Pete as Deepthi Madam also said uh you know make sure that you are selecting your options, reading the questions carefully, understand the scenarios as Parvati Ma'am said. And from my side, the best advice I would give you is that please be calm, please be composed and have an absolutely positive attitude. If you've been with us, you are definitely gonna be able to clear the exam as long as you just recall what all have you've been doing. If you're having your mock exams now, Please go ahead and attend them regularly and spend some time very sincerely when you're doing this because once it's in your head, it won't get out. So all the very best to all the aspiring CPS2 participants. I hope you all clear your exam this time. And I hope next time uh, those who are applying for the next window of uh, exams also found this quite useful. For those people who don't know much about us. We are a statistical institute called RISI, Raghava International Statistical Institute, and we deal with healthcare quality program certifications like CPSQ and CPPS. And our instructor and founder, Dr. Tenar Samarthamoto, he is a statistician who has dedicated himself to 20 plus years in healthcare, and he is very passionate about spreading the message throughout the world. Please do check our website and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you to all the participants. Thank you to all the speakers. And thank you, Dr. Tenarasa, for this opportunity. Good day.